Now, these metric prefixes we've been talking about, milla, kilo, mega, here's a little number line that has them all on it, okay? All the ones we'll be dealing with. Look at what's in the middle of that prefix number line. Blank. That's just for plain old gram, plain old meter, plain old liter. And then it goes up by three powers of ten. So let's go to the right. Three notches to the right, K for kilo. It means 1,000 or 10 to the third. Three notches higher, capital M, mega. You've heard of a megabyte. There it is. It means a million or 10 to the sixth. Three notches higher, giga, capital G. It means a billion, 10 to the ninth. And you don't often hear about it, but tera, terabyte, another computer term, capital T. That's one trillion, and it's 10 to the twelfth. Going the other direction works just as easily. One one thousandth, we've already mentioned that, that's milla, small m, and that's 10 to the negative third. Three notches smaller than that, micro, that's the Greek letter mu, and that's 10 to the negative six, that means one one millionth. Three notches smaller than that, 10 to the negative ninth is nano, okay, that's one billionth. And three notches smaller than that is pico, small p, one trillionth, 10 to the negative twelfth. We also have a couple of in-betweeners there between the blank and the milla and between the blank and the kilo. They're not used that frequently. Centa, that's one one hundredth, that's 10 to the negative twelfth, is used with meter, and that's about it. And deca, occasionally you'll see use of that, but not very often. But uh, they're worth knowing as well. Deca and, and hecta, almost never used. So, you know, they're there, but we don't really use that that much. And what do I mean by use them? Well. I can put milla with gram, that means a thousandth of a gram. I can put kilo in front of meter, and that means 1,000 meters. So you can mix and match any way you choose. I could put micro in front of liter, and that's a millionth of a liter. It's that simple. The prefix tells you exactly how many there are. NS, that's a nanosecond, okay, which means one billionth of a second. And you're probably familiar with this one, megabyte means simply a million bytes. Finally, gigawatt. If you're a fan of uh, Back to the Future, they talk about 1.21 gigawatts, but it should have been pronounced gigawatts. That's right. A gigawatt is a billion watts. So really, you can hook up these prefixes with any units you're familiar with, not just a uh, beater, liter, and gram, but really any prefix, a kilojoule, um, whatever. So. Another thing that is very useful for a metric, in fact, where it's, where it's most useful, is doing conversions. Now, if I take 72.3 yards and I want to convert that into inches, or 72.3 yards convert that to miles, those are not easy to do. I mean, they do have answers, but they're not logical. You have to multiply by 36 or whatever, and you need a calculator. You get 2603 for how many inches, going the other direction, 72.3 yards, comes out to be 0 0.0411 miles. But again, I used a calculator to get those. A calculator, but check out the equivalent. We don't like that. That's no good. Check out the equivalent version of that in the metric system. 72.3 meters, how many centimeters would that be? And 72.3 meters, how many kilometers would that be? Well, the first answer is 7,230. Notice how similar that is to 72.3. And the answer to the next one, 0 0.0723. See, it's the same number, just with the decimal point moved. That's because the metric system is all based on base 10. You've got 10 fingers. It doesn't make sense to be using something that's based on 12s or 3s or 5,000 or 16s. 10 is the easy number to multiply and divide by. You simply move the decimal point. Add a 0. Okay? Add a 0 at the end. Add a 0 at the beginning with the decimal point. Whatever you need to do to move the decimal point the right direction. But the answers are easy. Let me show you how I got those. Look at the very first one and look specifically at the prefixes. Now, there is no prefix in front of meter. Don't get confused there. That's blank meters. That's not a milla by itself. It's blank meters, and I'm going to centimeters. Well, look at our metric prefix number line. How far apart are blank and centa? Okay? Hopefully, you saw that they're two notches apart. Okay? That means I'm going to be moving the decimal point two places. But which direction? Do I make it bigger or smaller? Well, to answer that, you look at what's happening to the unit. 
meter to centimeter is getting smaller. Notice my arrow is going to the left. That's the smaller direction on all number lines. To the left means smaller, to the right is bigger. Because my unit's getting smaller, I have to make my number get bigger to compensate. That should only make sense. If I were converting 500 pennies into dollars, 500 pennies equals five dollars. Notice how penny to dollar the unit got bigger? So 500 to five, I made the number get smaller. It wouldn't make sense to say 500 pennies equals $50,000. I can't have both the unit and the number get bigger. It doesn't work, okay? How about the other one? Again, my prefix to begin with, there is no prefix, it's blank. Blank meters to kilometers. Notice here how the, these two prefixes are three notches apart on my metric prefix number line. And this time the unit's getting bigger. Meter, kilometer. If I'm making the unit get bigger, I have to make the number get smaller. So I'm going to move the decimal point three places in a direction that makes my number get smaller. So 72.3, move it three places to the left, and you get 0 0.0723. Here's another one. Go ahead and try this one right now in your note sheet. You can pause the video if you want. Okay? I'm going from 16.52 grams. I want to convert that to milligrams. Again, I'm starting with no prefix, so it's blank grams. I'm going to milligrams. Three notches apart. My unit's getting smaller. Notice how it's going to the left means smaller. So I'll make my number get bigger. I'm going to move my decimal point three places to the right. 16.52 becomes 16,520. I need to add a zero there as a placekeeper. How about this problem? 835 millimeters, and I'm converting to centimeters. They both have prefixes this time. I'm going from milla to centa. Go ahead and try to answer that question. Pause the video if you want to. If you look at the prefix, number line, milla and centa are just one notch apart. And going from milla to centa is getting bigger. I therefore want to make my number get smaller. Now I know there's no decimal point shown in 835, but it's assumed to be right after the 5, 835 point. So move that decimal point one spot to the left and you get 83.5. See how easy that is? No multiplying by 12, dividing by 3, any of that stuff. How about this one? 578 nanometers. I'm going to convert that to kilometers. Now, this is a bit absurd, but I just want to show you it can be done all the same. I'm going from nanometers to kilometers. You go ahead and try that one. Okay. Is this what you did? You saw that nano and kilo, those were our two prefixes, are... Three, six, nine, twelve notches apart. I'm going to be moving my decimal point twelve places. And because nanometer to kilometer is getting bigger, a lot bigger, see how it's to the right, I'm going to make my number get smaller. So imagine moving that decimal point, which is right after the eight there, twelve spaces to the left. We're going to need nine placekeeping zeros. Here's what it looks like. Zero point zero 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 zero. 000 0000578. Now when all those zeros come before the decimal point, putting commas in there to separate the zeros makes sense. You never see that done with the decimal point, um, small numbers. So they often though use spaces like I've shown there. So this though certainly points toward a need for a better way of doing things when we have big powers of 10 or small powers of 10. So we use, that's right, scientific notation. And it's actually easier. We're not gonna, have, we're not gonna move a decimal point. We're just gonna change the power of 10. Let me show you what I mean. 3.28 times 10 to the 11th gigameters, and we're going to convert that to micrometers, okay? So my answer, going from giga to micro, and find where those are on the metric prefix number line. I'll let you try and answer on this first. They are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 spaces apart, but don't start moving the decimal point. In scientific notation, you don't have to. Your answer is going to be the exact same as your question was. It's going to be 3.28 times 10 to the, and now you just change the power of 10. And if you've been following what I've been talking about, my unit is getting smaller. Giga to micro is getting smaller, so I want to make my number get bigger. That means I'm going to be adding to that exponent on the 10. We said it's 15 spaces, so I'm going to add 15 to that 11. If you went the wrong way, you'd have 10 to the negative 4. If you want to go the other way, 10 to the 26. 3.28 times 10 to the 26. A lot easier doing that than uh, 
having to write in a whole bunch of zeros and move the decimal point? Let's try one more like that. 3.7 times 10 to the 12th kilograms, and we're going to convert that to centigrams. This is not quite so uh, outlandish as the previous one was. Um, okay, you got your answer. Kila and Senta are five spaces apart. And notice how my unit's getting smaller once again. So I'll make my number get bigger. But again, we keep that 3.7 and we just change the power of 10 by 5. It's getting bigger. 3.7 times 10 to the 17th. One last one. Ready? 786 centimeters cubed. And we're going to convert that to milliliters. I'll let you work on that one. Now, what you probably just did was you looked at the centa and the milla and you went to the metric prefix number line, you saw, oh, those are just one notch apart. But hold on a second, we're not going centimeters cubed to millimeters cubed or something like that. We're going centimeters cubed to milliliters. It's like converting apples to oranges. So how far apart those prefixes are in the number line don't really matter. If you've been paying attention, though, to the previous slides, you realize that a centimeter cubed is the same thing as a milliliter. Remember that? A decimeter cubed is the same thing as a liter. A meter cubed is the same thing as a kiloliter, and a centimeter cubed, a cubic centimeter, a cc, is the same thing as a milliliter, which means our answer is, that's right, just 786. So that gives you a quick overview of the metric system. Hopefully you can see some of its advantages, and uh, hopefully you got a lot out of this video.